They're official, the Mate 30 and Mate 30 Pro have been launched. Here is everything you need to know from the launch event about these two phones. The Mate X folding phone will be launched in China first next month. The design on both of these phones, the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro looks absolutely stunning. It looks totally better than what we got in the leaked renders. It always does, but honestly, they look so, so much better in real life than what we were seeing in the pictures. It actually goes from a matte finish on the bottom up to a shiny finish on the top. Huawei say this will prevent a lot of fingerprints getting on the phone. On the back, the circular camera is called by Huawei a halo ring design. It goes all the way around the camera system on both phones. Then we get to that waterfall display, which is confirmed. Huawei are calling this a horizon display. It looks absolutely brilliant on the Mate 30 Pro. The Mate 30 is keeping a flat screen. The waterfall or horizon display as Huawei are calling it, has an 88 degree curve around the sides of the device. The Mate 30 Pro has a 6.53 inch screen and the Mate 30 actually has a bigger screen, 6.62 inches. The phones themselves though will feel very different obviously because the Pro version has that waterfall curved display. The Mate 30 Pro has a 18.4 by 9 ratio, which is actually a bit wider than a lot of phones, but the whole thing is gonna feel so different because because of that curved screen. Huawei did compare the notch to, well, the other notch company, the iPhone. They did say it was smaller and thinner than the iPhones, but to be honest, I don't really think there's a difference here. A notch is a notch either way. They have a selfie camera in there, a 3D sensor, a gesture sensor, which is going to help you control the phone through air gestures. A really cool feature this, we're gonna see that in the Pixel 4 XL2 with their Soli technology. But it's really cool that Huawei are introducing something like that into the notch. There's a proximity sensor in there and an ambient light sensor too. We'll get onto the functions of that notch in a second. Huawei said the Mate 30 Pro has under screen sound technology. This is actually a little bit of a disappointment for me. It means they don't have to fit an earpiece speaker up at the top there. But for me personally, I just don't think that that gives as good of an audio experience as having an actual speaker. There's obviously a mono speaker at the bottom too, but I still think the iPhone takes the prize for audio quality having two real speakers in the phone. Leaks said that there were no buttons on the device and that was confirmed today. A really cool feature on this phone is you can squeeze it or double tap and the volume slider will come up onto the screen and then you can slide around and change the volume from there. That looks a really cool feature. And another cool feature is that it can be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, it doesn't matter. You can also use those on-screen buttons as the shutter button for when you're taking photos too. The Mate 30 and Mate 30 Pro come in black colors, silver, cosmic purple, emerald green, and there are two different colors called vegan leather colors in orange and green too. These will literally have leather on the back, so no fingerprints. Huawei highlighted the main flagship processor in this launch event, the Kirin 990 5G. They went to great lengths to tell us how much better it was than the competition. They didn't really mention that the Mate 30 would be having a 4G Kirin 990 and there would be a Mate 30 Pro version with 4G too. But the 5G version, if you want to get that, does have a dual SIM. You can use 5G and 4G cards simultaneously, or you can use one SIM card and then put an SD card in the other card slot, but it does have to be a Huawei NM card for that one. You can't use a micro SD card. Both the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro get 40 watt wire charging. That's really good. And they both get 27 watt wireless charging too. Right, so let's just get onto the cameras of both of these phones because there are some huge improvements on these two over last year's phones. The Mate 30 has what they call a super sensing camera array. You get a 40 megapixel main sensor, 16 megapixel ultra wide and an eight megapixel telephoto. You also get a depth sensor on there too. This is very similar to what we see on other Huawei phones and a lot of the competition's phones too. So nothing too special on the Mate 30's camera. The Mate 30 Pro though is just ridiculous how much they fit into this camera array. The Mate 30 Pro has 
what they're calling a super sensing cine camera system. Of course, there's some great marketing going on here, but yeah, the hardware does back it up in my opinion. You get the main camera, which is a 40 megapixel sensor. This is way bigger than on last year's phone. And it is without a doubt the biggest camera sensor under a mainstream phone's camera. The ultra wide is 40 megapixels too. That is a huge upgrade and is gonna make the ultra wide camera way more useful than it has been before. You get the telephoto zoom lens which is eight megapixels. We don't get the ultra zoom that we had on the P30 Pro. You get pro bokeh effects, which is where the background is blurred out. Both the main camera lens and zoom lens have optical image stabilization, which is a really good thing. Now coming to the ultra wide and the main camera, the sensors are different even though they're both 40 megapixels. The main camera unit's sensor is very, very big, but it also is special in this one way. It is a three by two shaped sensor. This means that it is absolutely perfect for video, which is shot usually using a wider format. Photos are usually shot on a four by three three sized sensor. Four by three is more square, three by two is wider, and that's why three by two sensors are better for video because you don't have to crop into them. So now we know why Huawei are calling this the Cine camera lens. Both of those big sensors carry an RYYB arrangement, which means both of them will be very, very good in low light. Coming to the selfie cameras, both the Mate 30 and Mate 30 Pro have portrait lenses on them, which is a fancy word for a depth sensor, which is gonna help when taking portraits and trying to blur out the background. Let's come to video, which I think has taken a huge leap forward. You can shoot 4K video up to 60 frames a second, and you get full HDR support in 4K video too. And that insane spec that I highlighted in a video a couple of days ago, yes, they confirmed it. 7,680 frames per second slow-mo video is available on the Mate 30 Pro. Literally out of nowhere, it is such a ridiculous spec. It is so far ahead or different than what any other company is giving us. Huawei did show it off too. These popping balloons were filmed on the Mate 30 Pro and even if it is software enabled, software plus hardware, it doesn't really matter. The results are what matter and this looks absolutely incredible. Whether you want to use it more than once, is besides the point, it's there and Huawei gave it to us. The bokeh for video also looks very good, but of course this is a promotional video. We'll have to wait till we get the real device to see just how good it is. They also highlighted the EMUI 10, which we'll find out more about in the coming weeks. But the main takeaway I got from that one is that it is full on dark mode support in EMUI 10, which is really, really good. So there we have it, the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro. And just to say that the leaks this year on these phones have been pretty spot on. Subscribe if you wanna see more content about the Mate 30, Mate 30 Pro, camera comparisons and unboxings. Subscribe for that. But anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.